Welcome back to the distributed tracing in Next.js. This is lesson three, where we will go through the project files, explaining the features along the way, and identifying where we're going to implement the distributed tracing. So let's dive in. The project that we're going to work on is an open source app I built for the purpose of this course. If you want to follow along with me, you can use this GitHub template to create your own repo, clone it, and follow the instructions below to set up the project on your machine. You can find the link to this repo in the description below. So feel free to pause this video right now and explore more of the code. Resume when you feel comfortable with it and we'll run the app together to make sure we understand the functionality. There's also a separate video in which I walk you through setting up your local environment for this project. So if you want to see that video, you can check the link in the description as well. All right, so let's proceed now. I've got the project right here, cloned and prepared. So in order to run the app, we're going to execute pmpm dev in the terminal and open localhost 3000. Okay, I'm going to log in with admin at admin.com and the password is admin. And we're in. So as the name suggests, it is a flashcards app that lets you create your own flashcards, their categories and practice them. The initial screen is the manage flashcards where you can select a new flashcard edit its details, update it, delete it, and also create a new flashcard. Same goes for the categories as well. On the left side here, we can see the practice section where you can practice your own created flashcards. It goes like this. Cool. Now let's see some code. I'm going to open source hooks and then flashcards.ts. And if we scroll to line 86, we're going to see the update functionality. This method gets executed when we click on the green update button in the edit flashcard screen. Okay, so we're just going to go through it. As we can see, we set the headings. We make the put HTTP request to slash API slash flashcards and then slash slug. If the result is okay, we mutate the local cache. We get the result out of the response and then we return the data. If not, we throw a new error. Okay, so this is the client side. Now let's check out the API handler. And that's in pages, API, flashcards, and then the slug with square brackets. So this function handles all HTTP requests for mutating the flashcards. As we can see at the beginning, we obtain data from the requests like the slug from the query and the question, answer, and category ID from the body. We try to obtain a session and a user. And if either of that doesn't exist, we return a 401 unauthorized status. And then we switch based on the method of the request. So if we scroll down to line 35, we're going to see the put request handler. We first get the category. And if it doesn't exist, we return a 404. If it doesn't belong to the user, we return a 401 unauthorized. And we try to get the flashcard. Again, if it doesn't exist, we return not found. If the required data is not provided, we return invalid data. And if everything's okay, we update the flashcard and return the result. The update flashcard is just a Prisma update query where we pass on the ID of the flashcard and the new data. So this is the flow that we're going to implement distributed tracing on. We're going to start it off on the client side in the flashcards hook, pass it over to this function and then bring it back to the client. And that's it for this lesson. Don't forget to check out all the resources down in the description below. Like and subscribe and go check out the next video in the series. Thanks for watching.